So there are some teams that I forgot to talk about after they got eliminated. One of them is the Brooklyn Nets, who have been praised by everybody, including me, for the last couple of years. And now they're in a really interesting spot. And I've talked about some of this before, specifically D'Angelo Russell's contract. I've, I did a video on it, should he get a max deal. And I'll talk about that in this video. But the interesting thing with the Nets is how they have all the guys that they want to keep under contract besides D'Lo, and we're assuming he's going to be back. Uh, I mean, Joe Harris is on contract next season. Dinwiddie's got a great deal. Karis LeVert and Jared Allen are on their rookie deals, which is awesome. Jean on Musa, Roddy Karuks also on their rookie deals as well. So, sure, there may be some questions they have to answer in terms of re-signing like Ed Davis or Damari Carroll or whatever, but... We have a pretty good idea of what they're going to be looking like next season, right? Now, let's say D'Angelo Russell, if he gets a max contract, which I think for him is like $27 million, then that is going to take them to, I believe, a little over $80 million, which would still give them a decent amount to go for a free agent. As far as who that is, I don't know. I mean, you can make a case that they should go for, like, Tobias Harris or something, but... I don't think they necessarily need to do that. It would, of course, be awesome if Alan Crabb's contract was not here. But the, the first thing is going to be D'Lo's contract. I mean, I think in a perfect world, they would like to give him like 20, 21 tops. If they have to give him the full thing, they're still going to do it. And I guess that means that this team's offense is going to be headed by D'Angelo and Karis LeVert moving forward. I would like to think that's a pretty damn good one-two punch. I mean, Levert's stats for the season are going to end up not being the best, but we all know what he was doing before the injury, and he had some moments in the playoffs too. I say moments, he had an excellent series against Philly. Well, at least for his standards. I mean, first time in there, it's what, his third NBA season coming off of an injury, so that was pretty wild stuff. D'Lo was not lighting the world on fire, but... I think that's fine for a 22-year-old who's had to change teams and deal with injuries and things like that. He's definitely on an upswing, right? So you hope that those two can just play off of each other. I mean, they both want the ball. I don't think Karras is a guy who's just going to play off of it all the time, and I don't think D'Lo's the same way either, but they both can shoot, and I think they're both good enough at creating to where you're just cool with them doing their thing, and maybe Karras could be like the the pseudo backup point guard. I know you have Spencer Dinwiddie, so I guess it's technically him, but I think there's a definitely potential for staggering D'Lo and Karras and having a capable ball handler pretty much at all times. And then we move on to Jared Allen, and Jared seems pretty effective defensively. I mean, if you go into advanced stats and you look at from certain points of the season to the end, their defense was actually really good, and I think Jared Allen is part of that. Um, I don't know what his offensive ceiling is. There's a chance that he's just going to be in the mold of Rudy Gobert, probably not as effective as Gobert, but still that kind of player, which is totally cool, unless I'm overlooking some post moves or a jump shot or something from Allen, which is possible. But even so, if he's going to be like a Gobert or a DeAndre Jordan, more like Clippers peak DeAndre Jordan, then that's still a pretty damn good player that you're happy to have. So there's all that. I guess I can mention Rondé a little bit. Rondé certainly has a template for the kind of player that he's meant to be, which is a multi-position defender, an athlete, and I think it's good that he knows what he is. That being said, the lack of a jumper is real. I also wish he had a little bit more ball handling chops or just some sort of offense to go to because it is tough to have a guy out there who is not really a, a dribbler, not really a, a shooter, and also not much of a post-up guy. I mean, there are two sides to the floor, of course. But even so, if they wanted to bring Rondé back on a contract that's not that high, I'm not going to fault them for it, but... If he ended up on a different team, I wouldn't kill the Nets for letting him go either. And then there's John on Musa, who is a scorer who needs to learn how to play basketball. That's fine. He's 19 years old. And then Roddy Karuks, who's gotten some real minutes for them this year at, I guess, the power forward position. Anyway, 
ways that they can bring in talent to this team. They are going to have space. I've mentioned it before. They could get more if they find some way to get off of Alan Crabb's contract. I don't really know how that would happen because they'd have to attach an asset to that. And I don't think this team should be trading away their assets. The one way I guess you could talk me into it is if they used the Nuggets pick. And they were pretty confident that that extra money would get them uh, a real player. Like they had basically a wink-wink agreement with a free agent. Now as far as what I think they should look for, I think the two things you could talk me into, besides just general like backup center things is another wing to play with D'Lo and Karras and I guess maybe push Joe Harris to the second unit because I think no matter where Joe Harris is at he's gonna make the same impact for you or it could be a stretch four right keep Joe Harris in there you get a guy who can be a little bit, a little bit more reliable as a shooter I think they would hope that Karuks can be that guy. I mean, they had Carroll playing some small ball four against Philly. They had Jared Dudley in there uh, starting two of the games. So it's definitely up in the air on that power forward spot. I don't really think Tobias Harris is possible. I'm just going to assume Philly re-signs him. Do you like the idea of Nikola Miritich? He would certainly give them the spacing. But we don't know if they we don't know if the Bucks are gonna let him go. They have other decisions to make, but it's possible he stays there. And if it's not gonna be him, I don't really know who the perfect stretch four is. I'm saying that because I'm assuming that's what the Nets would kinda want, because I mean they're if they don't lead the league in three point attempts, they're like number two or three for the last couple of years. I mean, they could go the route of just another wing, which is what Damari Carroll is, and they just move him to the four. Whether that's bring back Boyan Bogdanovich or... I mean, I guess Trevor Ariza would be cool. You could slot him at the four, and he'll just do Trevor Ariza things for you. Whatever the Nets end up doing, I'm assuming that it's going to be well thought out. I mean, I think it's... I think Sean Marks in this front office has earned the reputation of us believing that they're going to do this offseason right. So whether that's sign somebody that doesn't really get talked about and he ends up being a big impact dude for them, making a trade that nobody sees coming, that's always in the cards. They do have all of their picks moving forward. I mentioned the Nuggets pick earlier. I understand that when they took it over, the draft pick situation was a wasteland. That doesn't mean they're not allowed to trade any picks now. I'm assuming, again, that they would do it correctly. I mean, trading first-round picks is not inherently a bad thing. Sure, it's a little bit more of a risk when you're like a 40-something, like low 40s win team. But if it makes sense, then it can still work out, especially with that Nuggets pick, which you could view as a little extra insurance or something. So yeah, basically where I'm at with the Nets is I think most of their players are trending upwards and this front office is going to do a good job of surrounding them with the type of players you need whether it's going to be veterans or shooters defenders combination of all three of those things yeah the nets are definitely going in the right direction i guess the one question could be how do they get a top like 15 player well again there's a chance that they do get that guy in free agency and i'm just not giving them enough credit in their potential to do that or I think it, then you're just hoping it's either D'Lo or Karras. So, yeah. Also, there's no there's no rule that says they have to use all of their cap space now. So, they could just wait and roll over some of this until next season, and maybe that would give them a better chance of convincing some star to, uh, to sign here. So they got a lot of options. They're in a really good place, and they've done a million good things, and uh, yeah. We'll just see what they do from here.